Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. So our next big major campaign is about to start. It's called Iran Campaign. So I gave the brief, the, the main um, antagonists in this doing the work are Iron Wolf and Obi, uh, possibly with help from other guys as well. And the original brief I gave them was the last really big, complex, dynamic, intelligent campaign we did was the coffee campaign. In fact, it's probably the only really fully dynamic campaign we've ever done. And the word, reason it's dynamic is because, say, on mission... Uh, 13, if you kill a certain SAM and a certain unit and a certain airbase, then that on mission 14, that damage is, is, is allowed for and, and we progress slowly through the campaign and each the, whatever you do on each mission influences directly the next mission, in, not just in terms of damage that you've done, but damage also that you've received. So if you've lost some aeroplanes, you've got less aeroplanes to play with. It was really good. It was the biggest and best campaign we've ever, ever done. It takes a lot of time and effort, hence we can't do them all the time, but here comes our next big one. My brief to uh, Obi and Iron Wolf was what I want was coffee campaign in the desert on steroids. Um, and so they've come back and created Iran campaign. So it's situated directly uh, in, in the Persian Gulf map. So we don't have to lie about anything. That is UAE. That is Iran. Those are the Iranian islands or the Hormuz islands and so on. The first thing to point out that that's really interesting about this campaign is it's not biased towards anyone so if we go look at all of our campaigns over the history must have done 50 40 campaigns now we've had 90 percent uh, and when they're human versus human this is obviously a human versus human campaign 90 percent of the human players have been on blue and only 10 percent have been on red and we had to give red multiple lives and stuff like that to compensate now the reason we did that is because we had a lack of humans to play but more importantly the uh, DCS game engine was just never good enough to host more than about 20 players tops now that's changed they've done a lot of work in 2.5 and we can now host 50 people happily as we've done um, so what we're now doing and we have got no short of players no shortage of players and guys wanting to join now obviously we've grown bigger so what we can do now is have an equal amount of humans on red as on blue so 20 guys on 25 guys on red 25 guys on blue and so that brings a whole new dynamic and rather than the campaign being biased, biased towards the blue towards 90 percent of players it's now 50 50 anyone can win this and no uh, side will get uh, a benefit if you know what i mean everyone's going to have it roughly about equal uh, things may have to be adjusted as it goes but that, that's normal um that's pretty much all i want to say so we've got a big campaign it's dynamic the effect of what you do every mission affects the next mission until one team wins or loses it's 50 50 split between red and blue um another thing to say is that players will stick to their blue and to their red and there will be a leader as i'll let the guys talk about in a minute so if you're a red guy then you're a red guy if you're a blue guy then you're a, then you're a blue guy unless we have to change the up unless we have to change things on the day because there's a lack of players or whatever which is very possible the only other thing i wanted in my brief is i wanted the viewers who you know at the end of the day we kind of do it all for to have a more of a say in what goes on um and so what we're gonna do as well as have in red and blue is that you guys the viewers at this point watching this video now i want you to split yourself into whether you're a blue guy or whether you're a red guy as a viewer and the viewers are now going to be split into red and blue. And again, you're not allowed to change your coalition. Once you've chosen your coalition, you're going to, that's it. You're stuck with it. And you've got to support your team. And you can support your team directly. What we're going to be doing in our Discord, uh, which I've got on the left here, is I don't think we've got these channels yet, but we're going to have the Iran campaign channel in here. And there's going to be blue side and there's going to be red side. And you guys are going to be in there. Uh, the viewers as long as, as as well as us the guys who are actually flying the planes and talk about tactics and stuff like that it's not going to be super secret stuff because obviously the other side can come and spy but generally speaking that's how i expect you the viewers once you've decided which side you're going to be on to come and interact with us to plan battles that's the whole idea to make it super uh, dynamic with us and with you the viewers that's the best we can possibly think of getting a campaign period um and that's it. Right, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to the bosses of the campaign, Obi and Iron Wolf, to go into the nitty gritty, please, boys. Roger. Well, I'll let Iron Wolf go through the list, but just to let everyone know that in Members Media, I'm sure you've all seen it, there's a link to this document so everyone can 
open it up at the same time and go through it at the same time. Mm-hmm. And do you want to go through the um, go for the units? Yeah, I'll just go through it point by point. Okay, so for the red units, we've got um, the MiG twenty one. They actually have the Chinese version of that, but we can mm-hmm. use that F five E. F-14A, so we've decided to substitute the F-14B but restrict it to the older weapons that uh, are as close as possible to what Iran has now. Uh, MiG-29A, which they got from Iraq when the um, first Gulf War was on, they flew them over. Same with the Su-25. It's not a T model, but just work with what we have. Uh, They have Mirage F-1. We're going to substitute the Mirage 2000 for that. Um, SU-24, MiG-23 and MiG-25 and F-4 are all AI. Uh, a bit further down, you'll see we're going to offer some uh, capability to have AI missions going on at the same time. There's a bit of a trial. We'll see how they go. Um, Iran has some tankers. Uh, they have, a, I think, the world's only 747 tanker at the moment. Hmm. Um, and they have, I think, a 737, which is converted to hose and drogue. Um, so they will have tankers. Um, they have some UH-1s. They have uh, Chinooks. They have loads, like 200 AH-1 Cobras. Um, the JF-17 is in there because Iran has been rumoured to be looking to order it. Um, we're just going to pretend that it actually happened. Um, just to give a more advanced fighter to the red side um, and a sort of opposing thing to the F-16, F-18 type aircraft. Um, AWACS, they got two from Iraq. They were flown over. One crashed in a very loud and grotesque way. Uh, but the other one is still, as far as we know, surviving. Um, so we're going to we're going to emulate that with an E-3 at the moment because according to Obi, I don't know, can you confirm Obi? The Chinese AWACS does not work. Um, there is yeah. actually a, a, a modded Chinese AWACS that's got Iranian markings on it and stuff like that, but um, apparently doesn't work with the Jeff. So, <laughs> ironically, yeah, that so, really seems to be the um, the best one to use with the Jeff. I've, I've had trouble with the A fifty as well. So, yeah. So to provide that data link capability and stuff. Um, also, Iran also has a pretty extensive early warning radar ground network as well, so that will also provide data link for the Russian jets uh, that have it. Um, blue units, initially we're starting with F-18C, F-14B, AV-8B in a carrier group. Um, we're at, on day one, we're looking at, it's got their four Mirage 2000s, that won't be in there. Um, it'll probably be more like eight F-16s um, that will come from the UAE on loan. Um, and then I'll talk a bit later about how, what happens with those. But they will have restrictions on them from day one. They have the AIM-120B and the AIM-9M because um, the Gulf states is like getting... We're looking at around 2006, mid-2000s sort of time frame for this because it su- seems to suit everything. Um, the first flight of the Jeff was in 2007. Pickles, pack it in. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and um, so those Gulf states didn't have, I don't even think they had AMRAMs then, but we can't use AIM-7, so AIM-120Bs, AIM-9Ms, um, that's the way it's going to go. Um, there's going to be a dynamic resupply system, so um, basically commanders will be able to order resupplies for the next mission. And um, those, in the case of blue, those those units will be flown in uh, by AI in the next mission uh, and landed. And uh, if they make it, if they survive, if red don't shoot them down, they get them in the next mission. Um, obviously, then there's a an incentive there for red to get in and try and shoot those things down because that stops their resupply. Conversely, uh, red will have factories that blue can blow up and slow down their resupply. So they're just a bit harder to get, though, because they're obviously behind quite an extensive SAM network, whereas planes flying in the air are a little bit more vulnerable, unless um, blue expends resources escorting them. So mm-hmm. um, so what, what we're saying here is each blue and red has a, an elected lifetime mission commander, if that's the right word. Uh, do we have those guys in place now? 
Yeah, we do. We've got Kingston, who's not here today. Um, he's red commander, and T Cipher is blue commander. Right. So, and you, uh, us players, and you, the viewers, will have direct access to those commanders in the places where I said, so you can go and interrogate them and help them plan uh, the next missions. Okay. Okay, uh, that's that. So, as I understand it, the resource system works by, um, just to reiterate, the Blues will have cargo coming in, in the terms of, I don't know, whatever, uh, cargo planes and cargo. Yep. and aeroplanes, flying AI aeroplanes, and the Reds can launch missions, if decided by their commander, to come and take them out, and that means the next day the Blues will not have as many resources, whatever that is, SAMs, uh, helicopters, planes, and so on. And vice versa with Reds. Uh, Reds are situated in Iran. They've already got their resources. But their resources comes in terms of, I believe, factories on the ground. And so Blues, if they choose, can launch missions to attack factories, which will reduce the Blues, uh, sorry, the Reds' resources the next day. Um, is that how, is that right? Yep. Super. Uh, please continue, boys. Uh, yeah, so there's some limitations on FC3 aircraft on, and reordering those just quickly. It's just so you, you can't order, you know, just keep ordering F-15s and then just be able to spam AMRAMs across the map with, uh, you know, 20 F-15s and stuff like that. So there's some limitations, particularly on the blue side, not so much on the red, because red don't have that many non-FC3 aircraft to choose from. So. Mm -hmm. Just while I'm whilst doing that, just on the uh, resupply, um, when Blues order it, they will there will be options that we will have as to where the like where they'll come in from. So it's not going to be always coming in from the same uh, direction, so that Reds can't just camp out and wait for them. So the Blue Commander will be able to decide um, within reason which direction the reinforcements coming from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only the only sort of restriction we have on that is they can't they won't be coming from the south because that would just be you yeah know, stupid. they would have to fly mm -hmm. fly over fly over UAE mm -hmm. proper uh, to do anything. So if you kept doing that every time, obviously they would never have an opportunity or have less opportunity to uh, impact those uh, resupply missions. Mm -hmm. um, so getting into sort of the plot of it. Um, we're still working on this, but um, we're looking at a, a what's the word? A cold sort of standoff situation where no one's actually fighting each other to start with. Uh, a triggered incident will happen randomly on one side or the other, and that'll kick it off. So that's that's what we're working with at the moment. We haven't really finalised how we're going to do that, but um, that's the way we're. Um, we're doing it so there'll be there'll be an incident and you'll have to quickly react to that and have missions ready to go in you know, a bit like they did in the cold war you know if the if the, the penny dropped and they already had their targets assigned and they were going to do it um and that would be the same in this situation the, the red and the blue force commanders will have to have missions ready to go and and to some extent briefed and then um the only thing that will decide what happens then is who starts it basically um, what kind of missions they'll be, whether they're defensive or offensive. Would it possibly drop in a missile from a drone on a military commander's head? <laughs> That's funny. Well, sort of. <laughs> Honestly, the real life is giving us so many cool examples. <laughs> to, yeah. to I mean, we planned this you know, way Torpedoes before. hitting ships and or missiles hitting ships, tankers and mm. tankers getting seized and, and um, people getting hit by drone, hellfires from drones. Um, there's, there's lots of this is great because it gives us a lot of things to work with but um, we haven't really decided as yet I, I live about 30 miles away from that uh, refuel that fuel depot that was hit by the hmm okay. alright continue IW or whoever uh, so now we're into the rules so as mentioned previously there's a permanent mission commander for red and blue um, we would prefer a permanent flight lead for each flight in their command but we understand we can't tie up that many people every day, every mission, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But that's what we'd like, if you can do it, great. But we definitely want two mission commanders because we want a consistent um, a, a consistent approach. And, and we, want the, we want the players to develop the tactics rather than us, uh, as we did in Coffee mm -hmm. and in Columbia. 
we come up with the missions, we come up with the taskings, and we come up with the flight plans and everything. Not that we don't enjoy doing it, um, but we feel that it doesn't involve you guys as much. So mm. we wanted to push that back. What's going to happen is um, midweek, uh, so the Wednesday before, probably Wednesday, Thursday before, we'll give each commander a map in combat flight um, with limited numbers of each other's units in it. Um, and then they will be able to plan missions from that. And we can then drop those in as waypoints for the different flights that, um, that can take waypoints, I guess, or that we'll find use from them. And we can generate knee boards and stuff like that and have that all ready to go in the mission when it drops on Sunday, uh, Monday. So, but we want, we want them to plan it, not us. Um, and they can use these uh, flight commanders if they want um, or not. It's up to them, really. Um, as it says here, switching sides should be strongly discouraged. Obviously, we can't stop people doing it um, for whatever, or it may be necessary, um, depending on uh, how, however many turn up. But um, trying to keep everyone on the same side so they they all have a common common um, goal. Um, so it says it initially has what it has now um, in terms of... Uh, uh, Ground units, so SA tens. They have a bunch of SA fifteens and some older generation SAM and AAA hardware. So they have Shulkers. They have SA two, SA five hasn't come out yet from DCS, but hopefully it will in the middle of this campaign, some stage. Um, we've done a bit of a license thing because um, Iran actually has a pretty extensive navy. And some of it has, you know, um, ex-American, as, as with its Air Force, ex-American stuff. So they have ships with harpoon missiles and stuff, for example. Um, and then maybe the A model, but nonetheless, it's still a harpoon. Um, so we've decided to, along the lines of the Jeff, um, stick in Chinese warships and we've sort of played it along the lines of, you know, Iran wants to upgrade its Navy. It's got to take whoever will deal with it. And uh, got these Jeffs out of the Chinese. The Chinese want more oil. So they're going to uh, do a deal with Iran with ships and stuff like that. So there's there's a bit more in here about um, what I mentioned earlier. So I'll probably skip over that. But basically, it's just a, an outline of uh, how the uh, mission commanders can order new stuff. So um, we're limited this to four or six, four to eight aircraft that will be now. Um, they do not add to the pool of the star mission. They added at the end. So if you um, if your pool of F-16s is zero and you elect to fly in six, say, F-16s, uh, and they don't get shot down, you'll get six in the next mission, not in that mission, but in the next mission. Um, so if you get it wrong, if you guess, oh, look, I'm doing a very intensive F-16 mission, so I better order some attrition replacements because I know I'm going to lose a bunch, and you don't, but you lose a lot of F-14s, well, tough. You've now got extra F-16s and no F-14s, so... That's how it goes. You need a lot of logistics planning going on then. You need a bit of forward planning and a bit of... Uh, this is why sort of having fixed teams works well because you know which, which are the strong teams and which are the weak ones and you can order uh, replacements in, um, in uh, line with those strengths and weaknesses. Um, weapons will be severely limited on the blue side, literally what a carrier group can carry and resupplies will happen by air. So you won't have thousands of phoenixes on that carrier you might have a hundred you know at this stage in two, mid 2000s it was well the last flight of the f-14 was i think 2005 so the phoenix is already out of service by then so we're you know very limited supplies can be pulled from wherever to do this so we're going to say you know maybe a hundred phoenixes um and and stuff like that so they will run out um iran has the capability capability to build them and they have demonstrated that they're building copies now whether or not they're any good or not i don't know but we're saying that they can build at least a models um just at a slower rate so they, they've still got problems as well um even once you fly ships off the carrier or fly ship fly you know air force jets that aren't carrier based in um you're still not going to have the latest stuff there because most of the Middle Eastern states don't have all the really cool stuff the U.S. does because well, the U.S. doesn't want it to happen. So you've got to fly all your AIM-120Cs in and all that sort of stuff or else you're going to be stuck with, you know, AIM-120Bs or AIM-7s or something. 
whatever whatever those uh, UAE and other states uh, can spring for until you can fly them in. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Red 4 will have the opportunity to intercept and uh, shoot down these AI units as they ferry in, potentially reducing the pool for blue. In a similar fashion, Red will have factories and blue can take them out. Um, ground units for blue will come in via C-17s um, and cargo ships for, I guess, bigger, bigger unit quantities. Um, obviously, you can sink the cargo ship and they don't get those. So they'll probably transit through the... A Gulf of Oman and port somewhere around there, and um, you know if you can get them before they port berth, then you you kill all those ground units. Um, this one uh, we put in, and you'll notice that uh, it has specifically attention cap because of Cap's regular comments about Colombia's Sam's springing up again. Mm -hmm. Uh, SAM sites, uh, with any war, I guess, uh, considered essential to Iran's national defense as such they place a high priority on repairing any damaged units. Now, we've decided to put some rules around it so everyone's clear on what happens. And it's not just, oh, we forgot to, they forgot to take that SAM out. We didn't forget. We just said they could repair it in two or three days and put it back again. If you only blow up a radar, and this is the first point, if you only blow up a, one radar or a command vehicle, then it will be repaired in the next mission because... Uh, a harm, as Caps pointed out before, just shoots a whole bunch of ball bearings at the, the radar dish, take the radar dish and put a new one on. Done. Fixed. Um, and that was a problem with the harm, early harms in particular, and the shrike before that, that it would only blow up the dish, and they could replace the dish and it was back online in one to two days, uh, particularly if they carried spares. Um, similarly, if uh, two units are destroyed, then one will be replaced each mission, and it may make the SAM site active. So if the will randomly replace one of them, and if it's a track radar, it may be able to use its optical guidance to acquire and then fire uh, using its track radar. So that's how Cap got shot down a number of times. <laughs> he fly past the track radar, and they would light him up. They would see him optically, and um, and then would be able to lock on and fire at very close range. Um, if the launches are destroyed, they'll remain missing for one mission. Um, in the case of mobile launches, because they can obviously just drive in new ones. Um, in the case of uh, more fixed launches, like SA-2, and if it becomes the SA-5, that'll be two missions. But here's the clincher. If you destroy 75% or more of the SAM site in one mission, it'll be considered destroyed beyond repair and will disappear. So this means you either have follow-up units, as they used to do in Wild Weasel, so they'd have a, a Wild Weasel unit come in and destroy the radar, and then they'd have F-100s or F-4s or whatever coming in in Vietnam this is with cluster bombs and wipe out the rest of it. So follow-ups, people. We tried to say that in Colombia and no one listened. So now it's in now it's in the rules. Same thing applies to, to, to Blue. So if Red do the same thing, they, they shoot a Patriot track radar and uh, it'll be back next mission unless they wipe out the rest of it. Um, there's another paragraph here about the uh, AI we, as a trial we're going to offer them and they can task certain units um, via so in the example of uh, red you know SU-24s or something like that we might have F-15Es for example for for uh, blue uh, to do particular tasks It'll, they'll be done to the best of our ability but we can't guarantee you know DCS-isms uh, what they're going to do they might just return to base give up <laughs> who knows they might wipe out everything um, we've set the map views to, this is going to be controversial, so we probably need to talk about this, to own aircraft only. The only reason we've done that is because, um, it restricts the fog of war view to, uh, tactical commanders and ground controllers only. A, it places more importance on those people, and um, B, the, the, it gives a better role for a, someone taking over that tactical commander role to do mm -hmm. stuff with ground. I prefer it. And, I've always campaigned and, for, for aircraft only, but I get so much pushback. Oh, look, you know, I'd like to have allies only and, and have the fog of war view as you've asked that, no. ED4, and I've asked ED4, and nothing seems to happen. Um, but we don't so we're going with aircraft own aircraft only 
if you need to find each other, I mean, most aircraft have some sort of data link or there'll be a ground controller or something and just say, where's the rest of my flight? I'm sure they'll be able to help you out if they're not too busy. Um, but keep an eye on each other. You're just going to have to be more responsible for your mm -hmm. own flights. Yep. You know, the flight leaders are going to have to be responsible for their own flight locations. And there might be, a, a, you know, opportunities there to do training in the training server and stuff to mm -hmm. train to do that, rejoins and, and what to do and stuff like that. Pick a, you know, there's that mountain over there, let's rejoin over that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, ground units we're going to have controlled only by the tactical commander who will be able to see fog of war style stuff in uh, in this own aircraft mode um, so they can drive the, the ground units around they can also act as a kind of JTAC and call in strikes and stuff like that um, in theory they can get in the vehicle and actually lay stuff I don't know if they have time to do that it depends how many slots we open up because um in the absence of dedicated tactical commanders, what will probably happen as people get shot down, they can jump in that tactical commander role and take over the ground units. And uh, still under the 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 uh, control of the main, you know, force leader, because you don't want to just drive all your tanks in to get slaughtered. So there's going to have to be some sort of command and control there. But I'll leave that up to the teams to work out how they want to do that. Um, some movement can be pre-programmed, so if they're like, you know, oh, I want a whole bunch of tanks to move over to here, we'll just do that for you so you don't have to have someone driving them. And it, generally, if it's um, pre-planned, they don't rubber band as much. That's what we discovered in Colombia, at least. If, uh, if, if all the waypoints are set and they start moving before everyone gets in, generally, they don't rubber band around too much. Um, again, that's a DCSism. Limited use of cruise missiles, both sides really have them um, to some extent. Um, what we're interested to see is what's happening with the Scud B. It's coming out. I know it's not really a cruise missile, it's a ballistic missile, but nonetheless, I guess the response to a, the equivalent to a cruise missile for the blue side would be, a, you know, a, sorry, the equivalent to a Scud missile for the blue side would be a um, some sort of Tomahawk strike or something along those. Initial star points. Um, the islands in the Gulf will be as per will be Iranian as per real life. I should mention that most of those islands are contested, so the UAE actually claims a lot of a lot of those islands, but just doesn't get into a fight about it. Um, so Iran, they say, administers it, um, but essentially Iran says they own it. So um, that will be that will play a part in the initial sort of exchange i guess i think whoever controls those islands is going to control the straits which is going to control a, how the play goes particularly with naval battles and stuff like that so i think they'll be very important and there's going to have to be a strategy to take those islands uh, assault the islands and take them with force so only one only one island that you can sort of see it in the little map there um down the bottom left there there's sir abu naya island is the only UAE-owned island. Um, the rest is going to have to be assaulted from the mainland or from that island, depending on how you want to do it. Um, Kasa, uh, Amman is uh, neutral, so they're like Switzerland, um, because sort of in our research, and I, I admit it's not a very extensive research, but they're friendly with Iran and they get stuff from America. So I dare say the way we played it here is um, they're going to be they're going to be neutral, at least initially. If things happen further down the track, they may join one side or the other, depending on how it's going. And as Obi's indicated there on the map, that's the blue fleet starting position. So they're going to start at the entrance to the Gulf of Oman, sailing towards the Straits. But at the moment, at least until there's control of those islands, there's no way the fleet would enter into there because they just get shot at from all sides by scuds and Mm. silkworms and everything so it will there'll be a long transition for navy based aircraft uh to get over there there would be overflight rights over amman i don't think they would we're going to play it that they don't care if either side flies over it um but um yeah there's, there's definitely going to be long flights and possibly tanking depending on where you're going now i'm going to hand over to obi because i've been talking too much okay that's a good point to hand over because it's right near the end, so I'm happy about that. Um, 
so then I suppose the last thing to talk about is I think we touched on it at the beginning is that there's no guarantee either which, on which side will win. Um, so there's no guarantee Blue would win. Um, it all depends on who's going to come down to which commander has the best strategy and um, tactics. Excuse me. Because there'll be ways that both sides can, um, even if things are going badly, still influence the direction that um, everything takes. Um, for the library, so I just I, I just would mention just at this time that if there are any Iranian viewers out there that happen to be billionaire oil tycoons, um, we are taking bribes mm -hmm. to help the Iranian side. Out. Certainly is. Um, yeah. <laughs> at, at least five zeros in front, you know, behind a number, and we're we're good. Mm -hmm. Opie, it's um, a bad time for a question. Okay. Can I do my questions and then I'll pass it over to you, boys? Yeah, um, I went ready. Sort of answered already, but we've got dedicated GCIs um, because no, with the map options and everything set, this is going to be inoperable unless we have GCIs. So I'm guessing we've got them sorted. Should have. Um, we just need to touch base. And there's been some there's kind a, of the there's a number of approved ones. There's a number of approved Helps. ones, so I'm assuming there'll be at least one person. Mm. So it would just be a Charlie Foxtrot, clearly, without GCIs in this. We, we will have them, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to sort them out. Okay, Oman, are they blue air bases there or are they truly neutral? Truly neutral. Roger, that's all my questions. Sent, open it up to the floor. Oh, I will say one thing. If you do land there, your aircraft may be impounded for inspection. Oh, joy. Um, the reason for that is if you, if you, you know, flew your aircraft to a neutral country, it could be seen to be favouring your side if uh, they just let it go or whatever they might say we'll keep it until the war's over you know um, same if, if your other guy the red guy lands there we'll keep that one too until the war's over you know no one gets them back that way we're not favoring either side you know um, or we'll send it back in pieces or something mm -hmm. I, don't know. I heard a lot of um, a lot of uh, thought went into making sure Iran had all, a lot of its capabilities there but what about blues there's so much in in dcs that doesn't account for the 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 blue sides uh abilities and capabilities and and i'm not sure that they have enough to make up for what the reds have so i think in terms of uh blues obviously they will have a patriot system a, a, li a line of patriot systems similar positions to where they are in real life um set up um we've obviously got to look at um obviously blues have got the sa-15 uh, reds have got the sa-15 which can defend obviously against incoming missiles will probably end up giving blues 15s to defend um the some sites because i don't think there's anything on blue that can do that um other than that though i wouldn't say there's any particular disadvantage to blue well in the in a real scenario there'd be a hundred harpoons in the air before the aircraft even took off so there's got to be something to k kind of give the the blues a the ability to stand off some of these especially if the 17 is going to be on the other side well you've got obviously harp both sides will have the cruise missiles on both sides are going to be limited the ai one so you know, the, the, there will be opportunities for tomahawk strikes um, from the fleet, but we're supposed to be obviously we want to limit that because it's supposed to be us against ourselves, not us against the AI to, to some some extent. Um, but both sides have got um, long range strike options that the say the F eighteen and the Jeff, they've both got similar ranged missiles. Um, but, J Sows, J Dam equivalent on the Jeff and things like that. And the other thing to just bear in mind is that the the J Dam equivalent on the Jeff is classed as a missile, so that is always intercepted by uh, anti missile stuff. Whereas the Hornets J Dams is a bomb, and that doesn't get intercepted. So there's various things that are working in the background that I think that equal the offensive capability of each side out. 
on the point of cruise missiles, you've probably already covered this, but I was late. Um, where it says anti ship must be Russian owned, does that class uh, Zimplea controlled anti ship weaponry or? Well, is that a... well, yeah, both because we've noticed that even the Jeff, I think the, the Jeff anti ship missile now has started to be being engaged by the ships, but we're still trying to test that. Uh, but oh, we are aware. Are the SU twenty fives alphas or Tango? It's just without the without the um, SU twenty. Well, the only two Red Four units in the player controlled list that actually have any kind of anti ship uh, capabilities are the Jeff or the SU twenty five Tango. But I don't know. It's not. Um, it's not highlighted there whether they're SU twenty five Tangos or alphas. Yeah, and Thank you. yeah, and also, obviously, you'll probably notice that the Vigum was absent completely from the list for both sides. Yeah. Uh, you bastards! That is, <laughs> that is something that will come in later on at some stage, and probably at, at this stage, probably for both sides. Um, we don't want it right at the start because Seahorse would just jump in his Vigum and go and sink the carrier, which mm. no one wants, you know. Yeah, it's just I can see anti-ship being uh, an incredibly critical part of Red's defense and yeah. arsenal. It and will be. Just, a... just, just without the Jeff's missile, without the Jeff's anti-ship missiles, the only thing on this list that we have is the Su-25 Tango's anti-radiation missiles, which again only work against a limited number of targets yeah the, the, i think the reason we put in that about the russian thing is just because we're aware that the chinese anti missiles don't get intercepted by um seawiz and things like that so that would lead to obviously it being quite unfair if um we just lobbed a load of them down at the blue and they, and they didn't try and defend themselves because it's quite a substantial fleet and you know it wouldn't be easy to get missiles into it um so we're looking at various things if they don't get engaged we might have to divide the damage they do by two, like at the end of the mission. When there's going to be after ways that we have to balance the fact that they don't get engaged. We'd have to assume at least half of them get destroyed on the way in. Yeah, obviously, for that balance, issue, balancing issues, Olive, to you guys, I just wanted to raise that concern that obviously there's only two methods of Red 4 having anti ship without the Vigum, and that is the JF 17's cruise missiles or. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the MiG-21 has got the Groms and stuff like that, but there's no way any of these other aircraft are going to get close enough to use any kind of anti-shipping weaponry that they have access to. So it's literally only the... Uh, will probably be the KH-58s on the... Or I think they're the 58s, I don't know. The longer-range mm -hmm. an, uh, anti-radiation missiles and the JEF missiles. They're the only two anti-ship options that Red have. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, in real life, if if it was happening in real life and that carrier battle group did decide to try and sail through the strait um it would be an incredibly difficult target to get anywhere close to for iran um so you know if we were to hit the carrier or any of those escorts it would have to be a very very special strike because it's it's designed you know it's, it's intrinsically designed to be very difficult to hit especially by two or three planes at once yeah, I just uh, saw, saw the uh, restriction there, and I just wanted to query it, because I yeah. didn't know, because it's under the ground unit section, so I didn't know if that was ground units only, or whether it was, uh, like, whether you're restricting the Jeff as well. Yeah, that's that's, um, that's my fault. I reorganized re this to uh, for this presentation, and clearly, as I was reading through it, I didn't do as good a job as I thought I did. Yeah, that's right. Any other comments? Go ahead. GCI. Uh, with the uh, addition of uh, GPS and then Popper in a week or so, We've been getting some great information and in how real life uh, GCI is uh, is done. Uh, the document that uh, GPS provided yesterday is in in uh, GCI chat. Uh, flight leads will be there's going to be a lot less talking by G GCI, and there's some great pictures and things with regards to flight leads that uh, could be used in training prior to the uh, start of the mission. Regarding that, I don't think a majority of us have access to the, uh, the 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 GCI chat, so you might have to put that file somewhere which is more accessible. Okay, I believe I put 
if I haven't done it already, uh, there's a duplicate in uh, G GRTP under L lot ATC hyphen ATC hyphen GCI. And I'll do that just real shortly. Okay, guys. Hey guys. Um, just I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. How will we determine when one side is actually won? So, well, the ob I think the objective for uh, both sides is to degrade the other side to a point where they can't fight back. When um, blue has no assets left. Airframes. The airframe limits is normal for us. We normally get through quite a few, don't we? So mm -hmm. I think well, airframes that's, that's will the degrade. That's the currency point. here, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about getting rid of the other guy's currency, and that's that's it. Yeah, you give up. yeah. We, I say, I should probably rephrase it, degrade the other the side's ability to fight a war in the air. So if, if you can't fight any longer, then, you know, you're out. Mm -hmm. if it, only, it might turn out that it only lasts a few weeks, and then we may give it another go and run it again. We'll see. Just, just want to add, there is another restriction that we haven't mentioned, but would seem obvious. Uh, there's no nuclear weapons. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll jump. Sorry. Oh, one more thing for GCI. We hope to have four, at minimum of four, uh, two for each side. Cool. If if we don't have that because of people's work schedules, what have you, uh, expect that uh, whoever uh, succumbs first in the uh, missions should be capable and uh, prepare to jump in the F-10 and fill those seats. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I do have one thing about uh, helo units that haven't been mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. Both sides are getting KA-50 because, as mentioned, Iran has like 200 AH-1 Cobras and um, obviously the states would have either Cobras or Apaches, so we don't have any any of those in DCS at the moment, sadly. Uh, so K-50 is the gunship. Um, both sides have Hueys, um, but Iran has le like hardly any left, so they'll have small numbers of Hueys and large numbers of MI-8s, which will be an analogue for the Chinook, uh, because we don't have flyable Chinooks, again, unfortunately. Um, and conversely, blue will have MI8s because they have Chinooks as well, but uh, they'll be lower in numbers just to counterbalance the lower number of Hueys on the uh, on the red side. Um, both sides will have gazelles, uh, all models, um, and um, but they'll be skinned up differently. So Bean's done a lot of work making uh, custom Iranian skins, which um, will be released and hopefully we strongly encourage at least the red side to use for uh, VID purposes. Um, he's also done some Blue Force skins as well, so uh, and they're really good um, based on um, uh, variations of current, you know, US military low-vis schemes and stuff like that. So um, we're going to strongly encourage everyone to use those as well. What about AI bombers? Well, as mentioned previously, there is the ability to, we're going to trial tasking AI units as we did in Colombia uh, for both sides. Um, see how that goes. If it gets out of hand or if it becomes too unwieldy or too much of a problem, then we'll stop. Okay. Uh, where do we anticipate to start? <laughs> Uh, I'll leave that one to Obi. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'd say the next week or so, really. I, I, I don't, unless I'm putting um, pressure on Iron Wolf, I don't know. But I'd, I'd say, you know, not maybe not next Monday, the one after. Um, and maybe in that between time, it might be worth a little training. bit of work up training for both sides, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I've started on the F-16 training with the boys, so, yeah. Start doing that. Yes, I think I think that would be a good idea. Actually, a bit of train up time, not only in just the, the jets themselves, but uh, you know, as I said, um, rejoin procedures, tanking would be a good idea for both sides. At least the things on the red side that can tank, um, and things like that. Roger. Okay, we'll get that done over the next week or so. Right, very good, guys. Um, that's that. Uh, we'll go and get on with. Oh, we'll need a uh, red and a blue.
a suitable uh, briefing document set up, boys, as well, like we did for the coffee campaign, as is relevant. So uh, don't forget that. Like a sign-up sheet, you mean? Yeah, a sign-up sheet with uh, a, a red one's going to be separate to a blue one because you can have different tasks and ideas to to do, I suppose. Already when do we, done. Oh, when do we choose our teams? Yeah, when do we choose the teams? Can we just click in blue or red now? Well, we we've already got Kingston's already put up a document which people have been signing up to. Where's uh, the document? Where is it? I'll drop it in members media now. There you go. Okay. Just put in member member mission files so it's more like easier to see. Right, so here we've got so far blue team, Tobik, Saiyan, Whistler, Iron Wolf, Stalker, Gary, Bray, uh, Grump, Dove, Cap, because I have to be the F-16 because I'm sexy, uh, Bear, Mike, Vaz, Chaos, who never turns up anyway, so I don't know what he's doing on there, Red, uh, why does it keep signing me in? That's annoying. Reds have got Seahorse, Soames, Bean, Chopstick, Onslaught, Deviant, Tail, had to be red, didn't he? Obi, Grinkle, Dragon, Skill, Kelso, and Harrison. How interesting. That's actually a pretty well split bunch of guys, isn't it? And Kingston. Not oh, and Kingston. Them. I would just type him in because he's obviously going to be there. Red for Commander, Admiral General Al Kingston. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah sorry i didn't see that yeah and just one thing on the split as well just we don't think we mentioned it earlier that i am wolf and i obviously having full access to mission file and, and knowing we'll both know what both sides are thinking and planning um so that's why we've split sides as well and we will not be directly involved obviously in any of the um sensitive missions shall we say you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah we'll be we'll be doers not leaders mm -hmm. yeah yeah, so we'll we'll just go along with the flow, um, so, so we can't use any knowledge to our advantage. When you when you sign up, also just if you are only in grav, make sure you put the little grav thing at the start, so we have a rough idea on who's fixed wing and who's helo as well. Wicked. I know, I know. Normal people, the normal um, GR members can fly helos, but at least we know people that are dedicated can only fly helos. That's it. Mudra. Uh. Which days during the week will the campaign will? It'll be Monday, won't it? Yeah, it'll be Monday. Is there any day that suits for this? Okay. All right, guys. And only one. Only once a week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is not a. Uh... Yeah, I'll probably do Wednesdays. I'll just uh, do um, you know a cheap sheet little thing that I'll be doing. All right, guys. Um, we've got a lot to get done today. Thank you very much. Any final important thoughts before I sign off? Super duper. Right, I'm going to go and get on. I'll put this video out so people can see it. Uh, if anyone wants to do F14 learning slash training today, uh, it'll be in about half an hour after I've had lunch and put this together. Um, I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm just going to put this uh, on my own and put this video together and have a lunch and I'll be back in a bit. Right, see you later, Cap. Yeah.